Hey guys, welcome to the show. Once again, I have Demi Ramos here as co-host, and I say co-host because she is no longer just the guest co-host. She is now permanent co-host of It's Real. Thank you, Demi, for joining me on the show on a long-term basis. Thank you, Jordan. I'm so excited. So who is our first guest on It's Real with Jordan and Demi? Okay, today we have on Blue the freaking tiger that is blue to tiger she is hot she's talented and by hot i know i don't mean just the music i mean she's hot she's groovy she's a bass prodigy um she's played in multiple bands that you probably know of or love she's a tiktok sensation um and she is one of new york city's finest so this is going to be an exciting episode you actually met blue a long time ago when she was djing in new york right yes so the reason why i love blue is because I can actually vouch for her being in the DIY scene in Brooklyn and coming up through that scene and making a name for herself. Um, and yeah, I would bump into her at these shows that she was playing basements. Um, I mean, more like rooftop shows. It was just DIY things, 20 people max. And then now she's, you know, touring the world with like thousands of people. And it's just, it's an incredible thing to see. She is also the bassist in Kitten, the band Kitten. And um, so we're really excited to talk to her. Demi has her hat of the day on. What do we got going on there? We got a boar's head hat ready to work. At hat of the day. day? This is a boar's head hat. I got it at the vintage store. Remember, I mean, like a, it's like $2 hat. Let's just put it that way. And yeah. I love it. It was basically probably a guy who worked at a deli, quit his job at the deli <laughs> and was like, I'm tired of the deli. And so he just dropped it off at this vintage store and now Demi is wearing it. So for, I, I, I think that for each artist that we have on the show, I think I'm going to have a different hat of the day just to foresee for the future. Yeah. You're going to be like the hat person. <laughs> I'm going to run out of hats, put like a banana peel one time. Well, you know, maybe you could do like a fedora next time, like a Britney fedora. Britney fedora. Like Back, a Britney Spears fedora. I will. I got you. I will look for that. Yeah. All right. So now we have Blue to Tiger on. How are you doing? How's it going? I'm great. How are you? Thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm Jordan and you already know Demi. Yeah, I know. I haven't seen you in forever. Bro, what is good? We're so excited to have you on the show. We were, I was just telling Jordan, you're like my girl crush. It's, it, was, oh. it was intense. <laughs> we met like, we met how many years ago? Like three years ago or something? I think so. It was about three years ago. I, um, years I was ago? just telling Jordan, you were, you grew up in the DIY scene mm -hmm. and you, I can vouch for you for that. And you made a name for yourself in the music, in the music world oh. and big, the big time. So we're super excited to talk about that journey. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I know. It's been, it's been crazy. How has the quarantine been for you? Um, it's been actually really good to be honest, because that's when everything sort of started happening. Like, as you know, like I've been, you know, doing music forever. I've been playing forever, but, um, the quarantine kind of like accelerated all of that mm -hmm. really weirdly, um, from like, just like online, just growing my fan base online and digitally and like TikTok and like all that stuff that kind of just, um, accelerated the whole process, which is really weird that it was all happening like over my phone and my computer, but it's been exciting. You know, they had an article that's called you the, the, uh, the base queen of TikTok, which is like, it's, it's, it's so strange that like six months ago, no one would know what that meant, you know? I know it's been, ha it's happening so fast. And like, it's funny when people are like, oh my God, like she, like all of a sudden she came out of nowhere. She's like all of a sudden, like on the, all over the internet. And it's really funny. Cause like, I've been playing since I was like seven and I've been like playing shows forever. So it's like the people that know me are like, I think it's really funny that um it gets written that way sometimes speaking of doing this for a long time um i want to talk about the scene in new york city um which is something that was booming a few decades ago and people some people say that new york city has lost their scene and it's too divided and all over the place but there is a scene in, in new york city that um i've yeah. seen you come out of and can you tell me about how that scene has influenced your growth as an artist? Yeah, totally. That's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, like, 
I played at CBGB when I was like seven, which is really fun. <laughs> Get out. Like, that's like my biggest flex. My biggest oh flex. My God. <laughs> With doing this, yeah, I know I tell this story. I have really funny photos um, of me there. But like I was um, doing this program called School of Rock and like you would have to um, learn a bunch of songs and then you would play at the, at like the venue in New York of their choosing. And it would always be CBGB when I like first started this program. So I played there a few times and I played at like all the different like venues and stuff. And that was like, I mean, some of my idols like played, you know. And then when I got older, I was gigging a lot just as like a bass player for hire. And I remembered like, I probably played at Arlene's Grocery like a million times. Like, I don't, I can't even count. Like Arlene's Grocery, Pianos. What are some of the other spots? Like, like all, you know, all those places. Yeah. Yeah. We, well, we even talked about, uh, we had the score on the band. The score was our last show. And yeah, yeah, yeah. they, and they talked about, uh, we talked about Cake Shop and. Cake uh, Shop. Yeah, yeah. I played at Cake Shop. Yeah. yeah. But now Cake Shop is Kind Regards, this new club. And I like DJed at Kind Regards a bunch of times. So I feel like I've kind of seen, even though I'm, I'm still like young, I guess, I've kind of seen the, yeah. um seen seen the like change a little bit um yeah new york's definitely changed but you can you can find your people i think it's just about finding finding the right people and yeah i went to nyu for a second and there's like a whole community at nyu as well um that's doing cool stuff so yeah i mean there's people around it's just about finding it i think and just like networking and i hear that you were starting you were in clubs tell me if this is true is this a rumor you were in clubs at the age of 17 and i found this video from 2015 i think it was of like it looks like you were it was like little blue up in the club getting lit with her bass and i'm like she's underage who let this girl in can you tell me what that was like literally so my first so i first started djing when i was 17 and i was um my first gig was at Elvis Guest House, which is another like sick venue that closed. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really lucky that I got to play there. And before. that video is on your YouTube channel still. Yeah, which is funny. I should probably like update that, but yeah, it's still up there, which is cute. <laughs> you know, people can see the, the, the young blue. Um, but yeah, I recently like found it again, and I was like, this is so funny. But yeah, it was a gig for um, Tyler Mitchell, the photographer. He had like a release party for his book, his first photo book. And um, my brother recommended me for the gig. And it was like my first DJ gig ever. And I was like really nervous and I like show up and it was like the coolest spot and all the like cool kids. Um, <laughs> and I had like my, I showed, I had to show my fake ID, you know, to get in. Like I don't, <laughs> like I wasn't drinking or do like, you know, I'm a very professional, but did like- Did you get your fake from St. Mark's? No, oh, where did I get it? Like one of those <laughs> websites, you know, like one of those things, yeah. But, um. So I had to show my fake ID and the guy, the, the bouncer at the door was like, this is fake. Like, this is obviously fake. And I was like, I was like, I know, like, I'm I know. Like, I had to like convince him. I was like, I was like, I know it is. Like, I was like, <laughs> I'm DJing. Like, I swear, like put X's on my, I was like, put X's on my hands. Like, I'm not going to drink. I'm just here to DJ. And you know, I'm working. Please like, just let me in. Like, you can take the ID. I really take have the ID. I know it's like I really I was like I was like just take it like I know it's fake so he took it and I was really bummed about it but at least I got to play the show and then after he like gave it back so like yo props that guy but um yeah and I, I played the show and that was like my first my first like real like club gig and I think that's when I was that like moment when I felt that energy in the room I was like this is the coolest thing ever and like I want to do this so that that show is really important for sure and you were playing the bass while you were DJing. So you were like having, you were like playing a song and then playing bass along with it. Did you, and that was your first gig. So did you get that idea from seeing someone else play along, another DJ play along with what they were spinning? Or did you, you know, like, where did that come from? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I mean, there's people that do it with different instruments. I don't think I've, I've really seen bass players do it though. I've seen you know, saxophone and trumpet, that's kind of, that's more common, but the bass was more rare. I think I was just, I was just really passionate about DJing and also obviously passionate about bass. And I was just like, why don't I just combine them? Cause it's all music, you know? So I was like, I should just do both at the same time. Like, this will be cool. Um, and I did it and people, I got a really good reaction and people were into it. Also, cause like, 
people can get so jaded in New York, you know, it's always the same sort of stuff. It's always the same music. It's always, you know, so yeah. I think people wanted to see that like something different. And then, yeah, I was getting booked a lot more because of it, just cause it was like unique, you know, and not many people, like no one else did that. Um, so yeah, I just kept doing it. And I would just like bring my bass everywhere. And it was like amazing practice. And I was just kind of like improvising and like jamming over like pop songs. And it was really getting fun. paid to do it. Yeah, getting paid to do it. And it was like, yeah, it was amazing. Great. So yeah, and I was still like playing with, I was still doing like bass for hire for like other people. And I was like writing my own stuff at that time. But yeah, I think the DJ scene is where I met a lot of um, people that I still work with now. Or like those, those are the people that really like helped me. I guess like formulate my artist project and what I wanted to do and all that stuff. So, and how did you story around your name? Um. So my brother, my older brother, Rex named me Blue. Yeah. So my older brother Rex named me Blue, which is like cool. It's a cute, cute story. Yeah. So that's your real name. Yeah. You yeah. Yeah. And how did you get mixed up with? Chloe and how did you get involved with Kitten? Um, that was cause that's also a funny story, but I was, I, my second DJ gig. So my first one was at Elvis guest house and my second one was at baby's all right for this, um, magazine thing called pawn magazine. And they had all these really dope females on the lineup and I was featured in the magazine. I, it was really cool. I think I was like, at that point I was 18 maybe. It was like a few months later or something than the Elvis guest house show. And um, and it was like me on the lineup. It was some other people and Kitten was also on the lineup. So I met them there. And then a year later or something, we reconnected and Chloe was like, oh, I need a bass player for, um, for shows. And then, yeah, I started doing that and I toured with them. That was like really good touring experience. And then yeah, and then I went on to did, with other people. Did, and did you, your your brother already knew Chloe or like? Oh, so he knew from from me. So like we both, yeah, me and my brother do like everything together. So okay, so you you you, you, and, you and Rex joined Kitten at the same time. Yeah, just like okay. as like um because they needed like a rhythm section for touring. And wow, show. you got it. Chloe got a hell of an upgrade just like that, just like instant <laughs> band. Yeah. I know we're like the you know the. Bro, sis, rhythm section is pretty, it's pretty cool. It was, it was really fun. Like I got really good um, experience doing that. So it was yeah. good times. Both you and your brother are musicians, right? So yeah. who out of your parents is to blame for these like child prodigies? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, like we're just very blessed to have grown up in a house where our parents were really supportive of like an artistic career. Um, like my dad's an artist, like a visual artist. Wow. And they were always like, follow your passions, do what you want to do, do what you love um, sort of thing, you know, very, you know, creative household and supportive upbringing, you know, which is not everyone has. So we're definitely very lucky. Why'd you start playing the bass? Cause when you're a little kid, like the guitar is the cool thing to pick up, you know? Yeah, so I was kind of like, I mean, I was seven, so I don't know how much this story really like holds true. This is just kind of how I remember it and how I tell it. Oh, it's true. But just say it. it's, it's sure, true. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure because I was like a kid, like I was definitely this sort of kid. But yeah, my brother was playing drums and he's three and a half years older than me. And um, I was like, I want to play an instrument too. You know, I want to do that. And I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I want to do that. And I was thinking in my head that guitar was too mainstream, I guess because everyone did it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was like, there's so many girls that play guitar and sing like an acoustic, you know, I was just like, I want to be unique. I want to be different. I want to try something else. So I went to guitar center and I chose a bass and the, yeah, the rest is history. And I'm really glad I did. Now I play guitar and I play like everything and other instruments, but I'm glad that I um, chose that instrument first. Definitely gave me an interesting perspective on music. What was your first bass? Was it blue? No, I went <laughs> like, like really <laughs> It was this really sick Gretsch, like old school Gretsch. And it was like taller than me. And then like the saddest story ever. And like, I hate talking about it, but I'll tell you guys, what? I left it in the back of a cab. So I lost Jeez. that. It's Not just, wow. I've heard of people losing their wallets in the back of a cab or something. I know, Jesus it Christ. sounds so stupid now, but I think I was coming back from a sh like one of those school of rock shows 
and I was probably all like excited and I was like with my family and we like put it in the trunk and then we got out. And oh, it was in the trunk. trunk. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was like the trunk. And this was like before, now I never put, I never put it in the trunk. I'm, I have like PTSD. Like I will never put my instrument in the trunk. I'll like hold it with me in the, in the, yeah. like, actually, but like that, this is before Uber and everything. Like you didn't have your receipts. Like it was impossible to find the, the thing find the cab so i lost it and then i got a really cool i have it here with me and then this is my second base which is like dope it's like a whoa big, oh what color yeah. is that it's like yeah kind of like yellow whoa yeah vintage p base and then are you a fan of kim gordon by any chance yeah she's the sickest she's dope i love kim she's like the only i was i was wondering if you were a fan of her because i'm a big sonic youth fan and yeah, I always thought it was so cool that that a girl on base, you know what I mean? Where yeah. do you find that? Yeah, and like Tina Weymouth, who's one yeah. of my all-time faves. But yeah, I think that was also the thing. Like when I was growing up, I didn't, I had to like actively search for female bass players, which I think was was great for me because it really motivated me to like, get good to like be that person that people would eventually end up searching for. You know what I mean? So um, there you are. Exactly. Yeah. And like Michelle Degotello is like another amazing bass player. There's a bunch of really, really amazing female bass players, but you have to like actively search for it. You know, mm -hmm. it's not really like out there in the pop mainstream. So it's been exciting. Like the whole TikTok thing, like when I started doing all the TikTok videos, like I was getting so many messages from like young girls and, and boys too, just being like, oh my God, like I want to play bass now. And you inspired me, like just the cutest, nicest messages. And I think that, um, yeah, it's been really cool to see that, like, it's coming more into the mainstream, like the instrument itself, you know? Have you got, have you got to meet any of your bass idols? Have you got to meet any, um, anybody that you? Well, so Bernard Edwards is like, my favorite bass player ever. He's, he's, um, he's passed away, but um, Jerry Barnes, who's the bass player that now plays with Niall Rogers and Sheik, um, is like one of my mentors. So I got to meet him and we hang out and we're very close now, so. Is the... Is the the good times rappers delight bass line? Is that like something you know, like intuitively? You didn't even have to try to play. You just pick up the bass and you say do do do. Like it, I feel like it's just like ingrained. Yeah, in the bass players. I feel like yeah. I mean now it's ingrained. That's actually like one of my favorite bass lines. Like my top three favorite bass lines ever. Um, I love that bass. That's yeah. That's just like a classic. Yeah, I think I heard that song. I heard that song in that bass, and I was just like, "This is the coolest thing! Like, I want to play bass forever. Like, I want to write my own stuff. I want to write a bass line like this. Like, that song was really inspiring for sure." How do you pick your How do you pick your bass covers for like what you're gonna do for TikTok or for YouTube or whatever? Um. Yeah. I mean, it kind of. I feel like it's kind of a mix now. Sometimes I'll. Now I'm doing a lot of requests. Like, I'll just I'll just be like, drop some requests in the comments, and I'll just go go through and if something piques my interest, I'll do it. Other times it'll be like trending songs on the app or um, trending songs just on Spotify or whatever, because people just love covers and they want to hear something that they already know, plus something new, you know what I mean? Like that's the whole point why I think covers are like, why people just love them so much. Cause it's like the familiarity of the song they already know, plus this new information that the person's providing, you know? So like, I'll try to do well-known songs and then um, I do a lot of like old school songs too that I just like, you know, older classics. I think it's cool how you, you know, you, when you do one of your bass covers, you play the bass line sort of like it was written, but then you kind of like beef it up and you like add different parts and stuff and you kind of like enhance it, I guess you could say. Sweet, thanks. Yeah, mm. I, mean, I try to like, yeah, I guess embellish and um, definitely take what is originally there because obviously that's why the song is good you know if the baseline there is fire um but i'll like take the original and then i'll kind of put my own spin to it and just do what i would have done i guess on the record if someone had asked me like you have some new music out and uh, i'm i'm i was vacuuming my my crib last night i was bumping the tracks my boyfriend was like what is this and i'm like it's this girl tomorrow <laughs> we're talking to her tomorrow and but i'm gonna my favorite I think happens to be Mad Love. And I know that was from maybe a year or so ago, but all your tracks are super funky. Um, and I love that no matter what song you put out, the bass is always front and center, like Jordan said. 
And I commend you so much for sticking to your instrument because, you know, a lot of girls in pop music seem to be on the same thing and, you know, just trying to do what works. But here you are, you're taking what you do best and you are making, you're putting that front and center in your music. So can you tell me a little bit about your songwriting process? What comes first? Yeah, so obviously having, you know, the bass front and center is really important to me and just like my natural instinct, like as you were saying, but so I'll usually start with, you know, a drum groove and then I'll add bass to it and then um, I'll go from there. Like very rarely do I start with something else, you know, very rarely do I start with something else. Um, yeah, and then I'll add, you know, melody and lyrics come last, but it usually it has to start with like a really strong foundation of, you know, the chords and the bass line and, and the drums. You know, I think that as Demi kind of touched on, it's easy if you get a couple, because one of your, you know, you have songs, some of your solo songs now are, have a lot of streams and a lot of views. So do you find yourself trying to maintain a balance between being Blue, the bass player, the, the person that everyone knows is the bass person versus Blue, the songwriter, pop star kind of person? Yeah, I mean, it's been weird because a lot of people do know me as like bass player, but, um, that I think that's just a way of people getting to know me and then they'll find my music, you know? So I think it's, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, but it is like a balance, like transitioning, I guess, from, um, like just a bass player for hire into, you know, my artist project. But I think like, I think nowadays just like people just like you for you, you know what I mean? So like maybe people like me like, Oh, cause she plays bass and I like th that instrument. But if people like me for that, then it's very common that they'll find my music and it's very similar to what I do like on TikTok anyway. So I think it all kind of, it all meshes together. I are, you, are you surprised by how successful Figure It Out has been? That's been a pretty big song for you. Yeah, I mean, it's weird because, yeah, I mean, I kind of am, I'm now looking back, I, I like, it's still like everything that's happening is still very like shocking to me just because it's happened so fast. Like, I think like I always knew, like I always knew that I was gonna get there eventually. Like any, I feel like any artist, it's like you're just pushing, pushing and then eventually you get there. And I just think it happened for me faster than I thought it was going to, which is amazing. And like the support has been crazy. But yeah, that song is funny because I wrote it like a year ago and then I kind of like put it aside and I was writing a bunch of stuff and I always just really liked it. And I just always thought there was something cool about it. And, but I never thought it was going to get like this big, you know, but I was just like, Oh, this song is cool. Like, let's put it out. Let's just see what happens. Like, let's just put this one out. Like I was just kind of like, that's the vibe. And yeah, it just happened to really connect with people on TikTok as well. And that's what also like helped it, helped it get to, um, this point i think it was just like the right timing for everything because like my platform was really growing at the start of quarantine as well from like my base videos and then the song came out like at the same time and it just really like crossed over really really nicely so yeah it's been like unreal it's like on the radio right now and i'm like what like i don't even understand like why like how like fans, that's happening you know i know your fans listening to this want to know Who's this girl behind the music? Okay, let's get real deep really quick. What is the first thing you do when you wake up in the morning? And what oh, is the final thing you do before going to bed? Okay, great question. I'll usually wake up, I mean, this is so basic, cause like, so basic, but like, I'll check my phone. But you know, it's quarantine. Check I mean, them everything, emails. Yeah, everything's online. I'll like check my phone and then I'll have my coffee. I'm, I've recently been trying to like journal in the morning. I don't know if you do this for like songwriting and stuff, wow. but, but um, I'll try to journal just like thoughts or something um, in a notebook, just like handwritten. And then, yeah, and I'll have my coffee and that's like my day, that's the start. And then before I go to bed, what do I do? I mean, I have like my night routine. I don't have like a, people are always like drop the skin routine, but I don't. <laughs> I that's have, like, like a line that, we were just we were just talking about routine. drop your skin routine <laughs> we were just talking about that last night because i got this this led panel to light me up for the podcast i was like i feel like i should be doing like my like, like you know. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Has, it been, has it been tempting has it been tempting to like really push down hit the gas pedal on the influencer stuff like i'm sure you get offers from products and you know yeah. like 
Yeah, interesting question. I mean, people send me stuff now, um, like clothes, like clothes and stuff like that. Which clothes I are cool. Free clothes are cool. Yeah, I love all of that stuff. I'm trying to do more. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd love to do like collaborations with brands, um, ones that like I care about. You know, like I mean, Fender. I've been working with for a long time, and we're trying to plan some new stuff. Like we're doing this. Big, I haven't really announced it yet, but I'm announcing it next week so I can tell you guys. But we're doing this big giveaway next week um, with like a free Fender base where I'm going to like sign in, give it to a fan. And um, it's going to be a whole contest. But yeah, I'm trying to do stuff like that that's more like things that I care about and um, what I see like my fans asking for and stuff. Yeah, doing it. Uh, clothing, you know, I'd love to do in the future like a clothing collab with a brand I like. and. Yeah, I mean, I, I love all that stuff, so. Yeah, doing something with Fender's a, a, a lot, you know, different than like some, you know, face wash company or some like yeah, you know, exactly. mask or I'm something. Like into, which I'm into, but um, it would have to be like the right one and something that I actually care about. Like I want to be real with, you know, my fans and actually promote stuff that I think is cool, you know. I think it's crazy that, that you know, like that's a sign of success right there. That it's got to be pretty amazing for you. The idea that, a signed base from you is something that someone would want. That's that's like worth something. I know, you know? it's funny that people, it's funny because in my head, I'm like, do I was like talking to my managers and I was like, do people actually like want me to sign? Is that what I do? <laughs> I'm the first one to enter contests. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's like, I was like, people are like, they want me to like sign it. And they're like, yes, blue, yes. And I was like, okay, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's just because everything's been happening really fast. So I think that's also why it's harder for me to believe because it's it's really been like accelerated but i mean that's amazing if people get joy out of my signature that's like the coolest thing ever <laughs> so yeah what's, what can fans expect from you next like what's um, in store well, for blue right now yeah i mean i have a bunch of new music coming out i have a single coming out next month actually Woo! follow-ups figured out which i'm oh, really, yeah. really excited about uh, it was written during quarantine on zoom actually so shout out zoom um, shout out Zoom. <laughs> shout that out Zoom. That Zoom shout endorsement that, deal. Yeah, Zoom. shout out that Zoom technology. But um, yeah, I'm really excited for it. So you know, that's coming out. I'm just planning music video stuff right now for that. And then I've like my full EP is done and is going to come out in the next few months. So oh yeah, a lot of more music. Um, just going to try to plan some more, some more things that I can do to interact with fans and engage. You know, online while shows aren't happening. And then. You know, next year when shows come back, I'll be playing and touring and all that stuff, hopefully. So that'll be really strange. The idea of the last time you were playing shows, you weren't nearly as well known. And now you're going to go from like, you know, maybe people chanting blue, you know, over and over again. I know that's the weirdest <laughs> thing that like, since it's all happening online, I haven't been able to, you can't really grasp the, like the magnitude of what's happening when it's only like online, like numbers, you know what I mean? Like I haven't really had any of those like in-person interactions with, with people yet. So that's gonna be, I'm really excited for that. You're gonna have with, to sign autographs at the merch table now. And I love that, I'm so into it. I love, yeah. doing, love meeting, I love like taking photos. I love meeting people, I love chatting. So we've been doing a lot, like I'll, I'll always like answer my DMs and go through my messages and, and um, respond to as many people as I can. Like I love doing that online, but I think in person is just gonna be so much more fun, so. I'm pumped for it. I always hear about how one of the most gratifying things at shows is when kids like 13, 14 year old kids come up to you and are like really into you that that's got to be, you know, if you're, if you got the kids, you're doing something right. I'm going to totally, because that's such an important time of your life when you're really, when you're finding music and listening to it and being like, yo, check, like say, talking to their friends, like, check it out. Like I found this song, like you, it's just the coolest. I just remember that time, like listening to music then is the most, you remember that. Shapes stuff. you as a person. Yeah, it shapes you as a person, mm -hmm. shapes your whole taste. It shapes even like your style and how you dress, like just, you know, things like that. So um, to be that for other people is really. Ooh, speaking of style, what is your fashion inspiration? You're groovy, like not just mm -hmm. music. You're like, I, I remember walking in the street once, I bumped into you and Chloe and I kid you not, for anyone who's listening, she was wearing, I, I kid you not, platforms, bell bottoms. This was like years ago. I Maybe I'm crazy right now, but- Wait, that's sick. Like 70s. It was like watching a 70s movie. Who uh, or what is your style inspiration? 
Yeah, I mean, um, I do wear a lot of like 70s, like disco influenced things. Um, like honestly, Debbie Harry, freaking love Debbie Harry style. She's a um, style inspo for me, for sure. Yeah, people like that. I mean, I kind of just do my own thing, like what I like is what I like, but a lot of like mesh shirts these days, people always comment on my things. Like, where'd you get your mesh shirt? I don't know, I, I guess I wear a lot mesh of- Meshshirts.com. Like, yeah, <laughs> slash blue, of course. Slash blue. Like That's slash your first endorsement blue. deal, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, I've been wearing a lot of like mesh shirts and um, like spark. What else have I been wearing these days? Yeah, I feel like it's it's it changes a little bit, but. You've got a nice like denim denim jacket going on today. Yeah, right. I got this like denim like. Oh, it's like a, a half jacket. Yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. There's like a matching bottom to Yeah, I'd wear like. But, yeah. I try to just, you know, make, uh, wear what I wear what makes me feel confident and fresh and cool, so. How do you feel about Demi's hat of the day, the boar's head hat? I was gonna comment on it, I really like it. I was gonna comment on it. $2. You look sick, you look sick. You look great. I was like, too. oh, like probably Urban Outfitters is making like a boar's head edition. And then like <laughs> someone was like, Demi, that was like, like that's a legit boar's head. And I was like, oh, hell yeah. That's a genuine yeah. boar's head this hat. This is genuine. This wow, is that's that like 2020 fashion change. Not the rip off boar's head hat. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Not love the rip off. <laughs> yeah. I mean, do yeah. You, do, you, do you have a favorite designer, a favorite label at all? Um, I mean, I like, I like a lot of people. I definitely like to mix designer and like high fashion stuff with vintage stuff um, is, is another thing I like to do. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even know, like off the top, like Ekas Lado, I like a lot of, um, this is like Chloe Savinia's line with opening ceremony. I don't know, I could go on and on for like- You have that. on the coolest rings too. Can we see your rings? But yeah, I love, yeah, these are, these are my favorite. Is it a blue ring? Yeah, so you know this company, it's from, um, they made it for me, this company called Shami. They're That's really cool, gorgeous. they make like custom rings, yeah. Oh my God. And, I know, I love that one. And then um, these other ones I got in Paris, and this is like a guitar ring. I always joke yes. that I have like, I have a ring that says my name, a ring that says New York, <laughs> and a ring that's like a bass. And I'm like, it's just me on a hand. Like, it's so, <laughs> but I'm like, it's just me You're on a one hand. step away from a Pandora <laughs> Charms bracelet. Oh my God, 100%, literally. Oh my God, have you guys seen this? This is the craziest thing. TikTok? Wow, TikTok where'd you get that? Um, they sent me like a merch package. Isn't this crazy? I love it. That's, that's dope. It. Yeah. yeah, but I want to make, I need to make masks as part of my merch line. That's my next, my next move. You guys heard it here first. How do you feel about the war against TikTok? Ooh. Oh my God. I mean, I, I would be very sad if it, if it went away, but I don't think it will. I don't think it's going to. No. What is it, the war against TikTok? Can someone tell me? Like Trump and the Trump administration is trying to ban it unless they sell it to a american company because it's like oh, it's chinese company. yeah it's chinese it's because of like security or like privacy issues mm. i don't know too too much of the details but yeah i don't think i don't think it's going to go away but There's see i hear that the chinese government is really a big blue to tiger fan so i think you're safe <laughs> yeah exactly like i think i'll just i'll just call <laughs> out myself and just be like <laughs> Just yeah. be like, i'm sorry it's not gonna happen like, yeah they're gonna <laughs> use you as an ambassador for the next like you know economic <laughs> deal you know really, literally i'll just call up my guys in china and be like <laughs> yeah guys we got to figure out this tiktok situation <laughs> no, i just think they're, it's like the number one most downloaded app in the world wow. yeah so i think if they i just i don't know well it'll be really interesting to see but i mean i'm a huge fan of tiktok i think like i think it's gonna live on even if it doesn't live on in this iteration there'll be something else you know you know what's crazy is why I don't I still understand why why Vine went away because people loved Vine. Yeah, I don't know why but oh, I was yeah. I loved Vine. I loved Vine. And there are why. so many like really crappy social media networks that stick around forever after they're no longer popular, but Vine disappears when people are still into. I don't yeah, understand. I don't know why that. Ha Do you guys know why that happened? I don't know. No. I don't know. It but. wouldn't be very conducive to base though. Like a six second baseline is, you know. Yeah, that would be yeah. That's the thing that really helped you is, well, now I know you can extend the time, but that like the time that the little time frames on TikTok were like perfect for you. Yeah, totally. And I think it, it actually made me more creative, I think, and being like, how can I express my feeling and what I like, how can I express myself in this short amount of time with this specific song and these specific like chords or whatever, you know, it was really like, 
um, yeah, creative in that way. Um, Speaking of time, if you could, if you could go into a time machine <laughs> and go and play, because I was telling Jordan um, that you play in some of the biggest, well, as everyone knows, you've played in some freaking amazing bands. And um, I mean, if you can go into a time machine and play in any band that ever walked the planet, which, which band would that be? Gosh. I mean, probably Chic because the bass lines are so fire. I would probably play with them. And this, I would play it with them at like Studio 54 or something. Wow. Or I would DJ, or I would DJ at Studio 54 at the Loft or Paradise Garage, like right when disco was at its peak. I would like do a set there. Or who else? I mean, if Prince were still alive. I mean, I, so I, would go, I guess I would go back in time and, and try to play with Prince if I could. Um, I feel like you could really rock a sequined jumpsuit. Oh, I definitely rock a sequined jumpsuit for mm. sure. I'm not ashamed to say it. I have a bunch of, I have a bunch actually. You have a multiple like- I have a multiple. I was just cleaning out my closet the other day and I have, um, I have like, <laughs> it's really like funny, but because I'm staying at like my, my parents' place and it's like my childhood bedroom. So like all my stuff, like just all my stuff is here. And I was like cleaning out my closet and I was trying to organize like a show box of like stuff I wore at shows, you know? And it's like all like, see, I have just like so many different versions of sequin jumpsuits that I was just super into at a point. I think when I was like 18, 19 and I was DJing like four nights a week and I was DJing a lot of disco music, I would just wear sequin jumpsuits every weekend to my but DJ. Do you game. have like a, an 70s like Elvis style white kind of vibe? Anyway. I do have a white one. I do have a, a favorite. You, what's your favorite sequence? <laughs> Can we see your of favorite? All, of all time. <laughs> great, great topic. Welcome to sequence. Can you try talk. it? <laughs> oh my God. I actually would love to see. Oh my God. I, for the first tour I did for my own music when I was, I was opening for the Knox, this um, duo and mm -hmm. I was opening and I was playing in their band and I, I had made this custom blue vinyl jumpsuit for myself and it kind of looked like David Bowie so I would wear that for my for my set and then I had like a costume that I would wear for not costume but I had a another like sequin jumpsuit that was like cat suit sort of like it was like kind of printed on that I would wear for the knock set when I played in their band so it was like two different fits and that was really cr I wore it like every single day I'm absolutely going to isolate this clip for YouTube and say, Blue to Tiger, on, talk sequin jumpsuits. <laughs> oh, literally, people want to know. The people wanna, well, I wanted to start a Depop and... and um, Do you so, like to sell, sell, buy and sell vintage stuff? Yeah, like, Yeah, I mean, I honestly, I go back and forth because I, I, I don't really have use for some of the stuff now, so I don't want to waste it and I want to give it away. But I also kind of want to keep it forever so that I can give to my kids. When I'm older and be like, this is what I wore 2019. <laughs> like, it's tour, you know what I mean? I just think that would be so sick. And it's like it's like double vintage because it's already like vintage 70s looking, and then you're exactly. like, mm. yeah. Exactly. Also, like I've just sweat so much in this stuff. Like I I would feel maybe uncomfortable like having other people like, <laughs> sometimes with some of the things because I would just I would wear this. There was one jumpsuit I did business every show for a month you've got like a you've got like a, a home tell me about your tell us about your home studio setup what do you got going on there how do you record yeah. and all that kind of stuff yeah i'm actually i'm like sitting in it right now but um i have a pretty simple setup i just have like an apollo twin um for an interface and then i have two really cool like white speakers i don't know how i can like show you but like two like yeah. white yamaha speakers and then i have all my like basses and guitars and um a nice microphone and that's pretty much all i all i use very simple um but yeah i have these like i mean people have seen it before but it's like these like panel balls, things like yeah. panel things that i use a lot um because it's inspiring and fun to be colorful so that's um you're that's you're you're, you're in l you're in l a right no i'm in new york oh you're in new york they good i was like because we were talking about everyone leaves new york and oh, yeah, any plans you know. to move no, I mean, yeah. no, no, yeah. No, 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 you, you, I was going to move to LA and then like quarantine killed it. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like that was, I mean, I was going back and forth to LA before quarantine. I was going back and forth to LA like every month, I think, just because I had 
um, she, like I was playing with this artist, Caroline Polachek, and the rehearsals were there and shows were there and like every, you know, I was like, I just had so many things there going on. So I would go back and my managers live there, like everyone, you know, lives there. So I was going back and forth like a month, every month, I think. But now I, this is the longest I haven't traveled in so long, just being in New York for the past six months or whatever. So it's been, but I mean, I love it here. This is my home. This I'll always be a New Yorker. Try and true, you know. Do you have any involvement anytime in the near future on any kitten project, kitten anything? Um, I don't know. I mean, the touring's not really happening right now. Um, we're still all really good friends. I'm just like focusing on my own stuff now, I guess. I'm just doing my thing since everyone's spread out and uh, just focusing on writing and putting out my stuff basically right now. Yeah. Yeah. I want to play a game with you yeah. before you, you head out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you could be locked, if you can answer as quickly as possible, okay? Don't give it any thought. If you could be locked in an elevator with Kurt Cobain or Eminem. <laughs> oh, Kurt Cobain. <laughs> <laughs> Jimi Hendrix or Mick Jagger. <laughs> oh my God, that's so hard. Oh my God, I can't answer. I can't answer both. I can't answer. Oh, damn. I can't. I'm sorry. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio or Brad Pitt? Oh, Leo. Damn. Tyler, the creator or Frank Ocean? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like people are going to hate me if I say Tyler, but I think Tyler. Oh. That's a, that's a trap. Either that's one. That's a trap is. because people are such Frank stands and I love Frank, but I'm also a huge Tyler fan. Frank is way more adult. He'd be more mature. Yeah, but <laughs> more I would mature. just get into it and I would just be like, Tyler, what's up, man? Like, I feel like, you know, <laughs> Yeah. Oranges or tangerines? Oh, tangerines. Ah, Dude, you guys are crazy. Daughter, daughter. <laughs> Team <laughs> orange all day. Like Thank you for really playing. Traps. These are I have to split the difference. I, I'm, I'm a Clementine fan. You got to split the difference. Oh, nice. Yeah, you're right in the middle. Yeah. Well, wow, Jimmy or Mick Jagger really caught me. I think I would have to go. Now I'm backtracking. I think I would say Jimmy. That was a tough one. Because I could always have the chance to maybe run into Mick Jagger again. He's still alive, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. If you really think about the game like that, you know? <laughs> She's smart. She hacked your game. Yeah. She hacked my <laughs> I hacked the game. I hacked the game. <laughs> Do you have, you have any more, Demi? You stopped. Oh, that was it. I mean, that, damn. That was fast. This okay. is a new game. Yeah, we're you still working out the kinks on Demi's do to do to do to do, 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 do game, and that's like the how what it's called do to do to do to do to do. I have like a sound effect or like a theme song. I'll, I'll it, make a theme song for you guys. It's basically yeah, the sound effect please. from yeah. Now you guys are ragging me. <laughs> All right, Blue, we'll let you go. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you guys. That was, was so, so much fun. fun. So fun talking to you guys. All right, I'll talk. To, we'll talk to you later. Sweet. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Bye. 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 It's Real with Jordan and Demi is presented by Pop Dust. Go to popdust.com for the latest in pop culture, music, and entertainment. And you can find me at jordanedwardsstudio.com or on Instagram at jordanedwardsstudio. And you can find me at demi underscore ramos on Instagram. Thanks for listening, guys.